Hey everyone, this is Joe Gamble, standing outside the Fryat shop and uh, about to go inside. I thought this would be a great opportunity to see if we get Steve to sit down for a moment and uh, shed some light on uh, the differences between old school attenuation and this new paradigm that we have going on with the power station. So let's go inside and um, see what we can get happening. Okay, uh, well, first of all, we're talking about a load of some kind on the amplifier. And uh, for the most part, the load on the amplifier is the speaker. So, what is a reactive load? The speaker is a reactive load. Uh, it's got a cone and a voice coil and a magnet, and the amplifier pushes all those pieces back and forth. And because they're mechanical and because they move and because paper and the, the former that the coil is wrapped around and uh, the metal housing, the frame of the speaker, because all of those things vibrate at different frequencies, they have their little subtle resonances, those are the things that are reacting to the input from the amplifier when the whole speaker starts speaking right right when the speaker is moving air there are these sort of parasitic little vibrations going on around the speaker doing its job just like when you slam the door in a house mm -hmm. windows rattle mm -hmm. the 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 porch light moves a little bit the the curtains when you open and close the door the curtains and the windows near the door move yeah those are all sort of parasitic reactions to the that you're walking in the house and opening and closing the door yeah. and the same thing with the speaker so what is a reactive load well first of all the load uh, the speaker has a, an impedance and that impedance has a resistance called a nominal resistance so in the speaker, the, the resistance is in the voice coil itself. The copper coil in the speaker has a resistance called a DC resistance. So you measure across the ends of the coil in the speaker and you arrive at the DC resistance, which in an 8 ohm speaker is typically about 6 ohms. Okay. okay. Why is it an impedance? It's an impedance because it embodies those other parasitic characteristics in addition to its DC resistance. Hmm. And that's inductance and capacitance and resonant frequencies and all those things. When you add those to the stew, those, those modify how the resistance behaves. So they actually change the character of that res resistance and that character addition and change is called impedance. So that's really the only difference. Okay. It's uh, the a, a river flows at ten miles an hour, but it goes it curves back and forth, and it goes uphill, and it goes downhill, and so all of those external forces applied to the river flowing cause it to go faster or slower, or make more noise as it's going over rocks, and less noise as it's going over where the the bed of the river is really flat. Mm -hmm. That would be like the same as impedance to the resistance of the res of the river just flowing against the uh, the resistance that the water encounters sliding over the 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 floor, mm -hmm. you know, the uh, the the bottom of the of the river, the bed. Okay, so in a reactive load, what we're doing is we're just trying to copy how the speaker behaves. Now, Certainly. in the resistance part. Which and this is this is basically part of the uh, the load assembly and the power load. This is just resistors in series and in parallel that are allowing us to switch between combinations of these to arrive at four, eight, and sixteen ohms or two ohms or whatever. Okay. So they're doing the DC resistance part of the voice coil. All right. So how do we get that turned into impedance? 
We do that by making it reactive. And how do we make it reactive? We add additional components, capacitors and resistors and inductors that carry on the same sort of behaviors as what the speaker does when you're driving it with the load, sure. which is um, the inductors resonate at certain frequencies and uh, so we have two inductive components in the in the adductor board that gives us the big low frequency hump in the bottom of the range of the speaker and as the frequency goes up the inductance of the speaker changes and and it gives it causes high frequencies to rise as the frequency that the speaker is seeing goes up and so there's another inductive circuit in there that does that part oh wow so what it, how an inductive how a reactive load is different than a than a non-reactive load is that it is a non-reactive resistive load stacked on top of an inductive load mm. so they're two parts working together mm. they're just mechanically separate in a speaker they're all of a part but the 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 frame of the speaker is separate from the cone, and the cone is, is separate from the magnet and all that. And in the same way, the resistor of the voice coil is separate from the inductive components that, that influence its behavior. So uh -huh. they're separate, and they work together as a team to accomplish that. Now, um, we play around that a little bit by adding switches to um, manipulate how much reactive behavior there is in the low frequencies as uh, as um as demonstrated by the behavior of the 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 warm deep voicing switch which covers the low frequency end of the of the equation the low frequency resonant peak that you see on the impedance curve of the speaker uh -huh. and then we have the the second voicing switch which uh, which acts upon the the high frequency behavior the high frequency inductive behavior of the speaker and or bypasses it uh and turns off that behavior so we can have the behavior completely off which is called flat in both frequency ranges we can enhance that behavior or introduce that behavior by switching it to the middle position and then we can let the reactive load run fully wide open uh, by setting both speakers to the top position. And what this does is it increases the amplitude of that behavior and shifts the frequency. In the high frequency range, it shifts it to the right. In the low frequency range, it shifts that low frequency peak a little to the left, mm -hmm. which is what happens when you take an amp and plug it into one speaker and it behaves a certain way. And you may plug it into another speaker that's brighter and deeper and it will shift the, bright, the highs to the right. Sure which is the right means those tools. up in frequency and the low end to the left, which means the difference between, say, a, a speaker with a 75 hertz cone and a speaker with a 55 hertz cone. So that means that hump shifted left 20 hertz. It's only 20 hertz. But when you're, when you're doing a drop detuning yeah. and you thump mute on the strings, that 20 hertz can make a significant difference in how ass kicking the sound is, you know, with a lot of gain and, a, and clean power behind it. Uh, so that is what's important about a reactive load and how it's different and how it's very similar to a resistive load. So really the, the development in, in the loading technology from the days when everything was just resistive to now is that we zeroed in on on what specific behaviors the, the speakers are are introducing into the equation and how to mimic those and modeling tools like spice models and things like that help us sort of just look at them test equipment allows us to sort of see these things and manipulate them and come up with with uh models of circuits to experiment with and you can just see you can see in real time that oh we need a little more inductance let's mm. let's play around with the inductor value a little bit or or maybe change the the uh, relationship of the inductance to the capacitance in that part of the filter to get it to do exactly what we want it to do not sort of arbitrarily what we want it to do and then there's freaks like us that 
take it way too seriously and just like get into it really deep and go, you know, there's people out there are going to hear the difference between this and this. Yeah. So, well, let's just give them a switch, you know, like we always do. We're such suckers. Whenever we introduce a product, the first reaction from the customer is, that's really great. You know, it'd be even better if you did. Mm. And, and we, it's like Lucy with the football. We always, <laughs> we always fall for it. We go, yeah, you know. I think the assumption out there is if you can do a thing, then you can do this thing a little more. Mm -hmm. And the assumption is usually correct, mm -hmm. although sometimes we even fall victim to being a little, to, to uh, acqu acquiesce a little too much to the point where the same person that, whose idea it was that we should, ex you know, extend that logic a little farther will be the guy that if we go one step too far, they're going to go, man, that's just too many switches. Oh, yeah, that. Right. Yeah. So that's always the that battle. Yeah. That's always the battle. Yeah.